Today, I'm talking to Edwin Upson, and he's the Group Vice President, Enterprise Cloud Architects at Oracle. Edwin, welcome. You are closely involved to, in Sail GP. And last year, I was in San Francisco and had really the opportunity to sail next to the Sail GP boats. And that was really a great, amazing experience where they go almost 15 knots. Can you explain how you work with the Sail GP team and how analytics is redefining the sports of sailing? Yeah, first, thanks for having me. Obviously, uh, an exciting story to tell and something that I think both Sail GP and Oracle are uh, particularly proud of. Um, but the journey began about two years ago. Uh, and we had to figure out how best to get uh, thousands of data points off of hundreds of sensors from the boats uh, to the Oracle Cloud where we could perform the analytics, which I'll cover in a few seconds. But I think for the audience, it's important to understand architecturally what we developed. Uh, so effectively what you have is a bespoke LTE network sitting across the water. Uh, the data is streamed uh, from the boats and the sensors that I mentioned uh, through that network to an onshore data center and then up to the Oracle Cloud. Um, for context, this takes about 200 milliseconds. Uh, if you blink your eyes, that's 200 milliseconds. So from an engineering perspective, uh, a, a pretty uh, astonishing achievement. Uh, now, once the data is in the Oracle Cloud, we push it to two different locations. Uh, one is into an Oracle database and the other is into an autonomous data warehouse. In the autonomous data warehouse, we have an Oracle Analytics Cloud uh, layered on top of that. Uh, so what we're able to show uh, to not only the fans, but the coaches, uh, the broadcast booth, and basically near real time, is a whole set of analytics around uh, altitude of a boat, speed of a boat, pitch of a boat, uh, foil height, et cetera. Uh, and again, like I said, this happens in near real time and allows the teams to make the appropriate adjustments. There's a number of other projects that uh, we're working on for the upcoming season. Obviously we have the benefit of some time or perhaps unfortunately we had the benefit of some time. Uh, the most interesting one I would say is probably around uh, wind fields. Uh, so uh, the fate of, uh, of, of the sailors and, and, and the crew is largely dependent on their ability to read the wind conditions and, and the wind on, on the course. Uh, so now with the sensors that we have, not only on the boats, but on some of the um, marks that are on the water, uh, we're able to pick up in near real time uh, the wind conditions uh, and then effectively develop a, a heat map, which uh, coaches and, and broadcasters can use to predict, you know, which boat is in an optimal position uh, to potentially uh, win an event or win a race. Um, the other thing that we're looking at is, uh, you know, how do we use that same wind data uh, to calibrate the devices that are on the boats themselves. So right now, this is a manual exercise. You know, some teams are better at it than others, but why not use uh, the more sophisticated analytics that we have uh, to do dynamic, uh, near real-time uh, adjustments to, to the wind instruments as well. So we think that's pretty exciting and something that we're looking forward to uh, launching in the, in the upcoming season. Um, the final thing that we're doing with the entirety uh, of the data that we have, and we're talking about billions and billions of data points that we're collecting over uh, a period of time, is build um, a velocity prediction program, or what is otherwise known as a simulator. Uh, and what this will allow us to do is, is to actually train uh, the athletes when out of the water. Uh, so as you can imagine, when you have a bullet that's approaching uh, 60 knots, uh, the sport can be quite dangerous. Uh, so why not use all this data that we have in, in order to build, uh, you know, build a simulator where crews uh, can train uh, in, in safe conditions. Uh, also, it's quite expensive to put the boats in the water. Uh, so to the extent that we're able to develop a cost-effective simulator, uh, we can train with more regularity. Uh, the other interesting thing that we're gonna glean from that is a way to groom future sailors. Uh, so how do we intend to do that? Well, uh, the same uh, foundation that we're developing uh, around the simulator is going to be used uh, for, for eSports. Uh, and that will allow us to, you know, uh, you know train through motion platform uh, simulators, uh, this next generation of sailors in, in, in conditions that are nearly identical uh, to what they would face uh, on the water. So lots of uh, exciting stuff, you know, from a very sophisticated IoT network on the water uh, through a real-time streaming and, and analytics feed to the Oracle Cloud, 
uh, to future uses around esports and simulators and making the sport safer and more consumable for the broader audience. It's amazing to see how important data and analytics and simulation is to the sport and really to help these teams competing really on the edge. Can you explain how businesses can learn from this and how they can apply these learnings to outperform their type of competitors? Well, I mean, one of the things that always is top of mind around this implementation, I and mean, we talk about, you know, it really, we really add about four to five months to build the base infrastructure, which is that sophisticated IoT framework that I described, is you see, you know, in, in, in factories and, you know, retail, um, and it's sort of this explosion of, of you know, IoT centric uh, devices and, and, and sensors. And, um, you know, because we were able to do that in a sport with very challenging uh, times and, 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 and circumstances, um, we think it'd be very easy to instrument a, a factory and drive significant efficiencies. Of course, the analytics that they'd be looking at might be much different in retail. It could be about, you know, sort of the, the population throw, flow through the store manufacturing, you know, how do you optimize the supply chain, et cetera. But certainly if you can do it on the water, you can do it in a controlled circumstance. So I think that's one very, very simple way um, that, you know, we can make a metaphor between what we've done with CLGP and what the broader industry could, could consume. The other thing is around simulators. I mean, simulators have been around for a long time. Um, you know, there's crash simulators and, and you know, in the automobile industry. Um, but again, I think that the number of variables that we're looking at here uh, are probably far greater than what you might see in those industries as well. So um, I think both are interesting use cases that have applicability uh, outside of outside of sailing. And, and I think you know the thing that I would I would share with the group is you know what we were able to develop in, in three months is, is pretty impressive, and I would imagine a larger organization uh, could really develop something much more sophisticated, given more time and resources. And you were explaining in the beginning that these boats are full with sensors and they use all kinds of external data sources. Can you more, tell in more detail about what type of data is analyzed and what type of decisions are taken during such a race? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things I would say. So we have um, thousands of data points, right? So basically everything related to the events we're monitoring. This could be, you know, water conditions, wind conditions, which I mentioned, but also biometric conditions uh, uh, of the sailors, temperatures, how many times a certain button was pushed. Um, you know, there's just multiple different uh, data points that, that we're looking at in order to make informed decisions about what to do moving forward. Um, I think a key design principle, which I failed to mention, um, is that the data is ubiquitous. So unlike other competitive sports where each team or organization has their own data scientists that, you know, write their own models and algorithms against these data sets, all the data is shared. And the reason that we're doing it is we really want to have a competitive um, sporting event, right, where the athletes are what's determining um, success or failure versus uh, the analytics and the engineering or perhaps the financial means of any one team uh, in order to make smart decisions. So, for example, you could look at, you know, Australia and how it performed and some of the some of the maneuvers that it made on the course and compare that with Great, Great Britain. Um, and, you know, having that ability to share the data uh, makes the sport more competitive, but also makes everyone better. So I think the data ubiquity component to the story is, is, is really powerful because it's really accelerating innovation um, across all the organizations and across all the teams. That's really exciting. Edwin, thanks again for joining our show and for sharing your exciting experience with the CLGP teams. And for the audience, thank you for watching and see you next time.